And today, my young friends, the reality is the fire doesn't burn anymore. The fire is not burning in our hearts. You know, the situation of the Ummah can sum it up in a nutshell. Have you seen a balloon? When you take the air out of the balloon, there's nothing left. Totally deflated. Tuss. And this is the example of the Ummah at this moment in time. It's like our hearts are dead. It's like that our spirit is dead, our Iman is dead. You know, as a nation, I mean, it's pointless even going down that line. Humiliation after humiliation, which we accept. And as individuals, what is the worth of an individual? Never mind any other obligation. The biggest obligation in Islam after Iman is prayers. And he cannot even carry out his five daily prayers. We struggle to do this. We wake up for our work on time, but we can't get off of Fajr Salah. We have time to do overtime in the evening, but we find it difficult to offer Aisha Salah because it's late. We are excelling in evil. This is the condition of the Muslims. We're setting new records when it comes to pleasing the shaitan, going against the teachings of Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My friends, but for how long will it last? How long? When the angel of death stands before you with a forked mace out of fire, and then he strikes you with the forks, and the forks pierce your body, and then he's twisting and turning, slowly extracting your soul from your toes, slowly, slowly, while the other angels beat you, and then he calls out, Come out to a place of scorching wind, scalding water, shadows of black smoke, no cool, no refreshing. Is that when it will all come to an end? My friends, in this day and age, when we are excelling in evil, what will become of our children? If such is our condition that we ourselves do not even know the basics of our deen, we don't even know our purpose in creation, we don't even know what the Quran and the Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying to us, then how long before our children, or God forbid our grandchildren, begin to say, Adrakna aba'ana la hadhi al-qalima fanakuluha, that the only reason we say la ilaha illallah is because one upon a time our fathers used to say la ilaha illallah. Bearing in mind that we are living in very tough times, very difficult times in which people are bent upon wiping the nur of Allah, the deen of Allah, in which people are bent upon taking the gift of Iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. I conclude with the verse of the Quran. My young friends, do not become like those that Allah forgot. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgot them. You are the backbone of this nation and you are the future of this nation. You young blood, you are the backbone and you are the future and you are the only ones that can restore the former glory of the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this Ummah is calling out for you to help. This Ummah is asking you to rise to the challenge. My young friend, you have the blood in your body. You have the energy. All you need to do is channel, channel the energy in the right direction. You are the Ummadis of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Surely we should know better. One man was given the, 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 the responsibility of conveying the message in the land of Arabia. The very place that even the Romans didn't want to rule them. Even the Persians didn't want to rule these people. Why? Because they were in the depths of darkness, ignorance. These people had no regard for their own daughters. They would take them and bury them alive. Who wanted to rule these people? One man was given the responsibility. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Muhammad. Come for and there, stand and warn these people. He rose up to the challenge. My friend, he was a human being, just like you and I. He rose up to the challenge. The fire that was burning in his heart was such that he could not tolerate even one of his ummatis going towards Jahannam. And he worked day and night, privately, publicly. He could call them to La ilaha illallah. They would insult him, verbal persecution to physical persecution. They beat him so much that in thigh he's covered in so much blood that he can barely walk. And then they come in Badr, then they come in Uhud, then they come united in Ahzab, battle after battle to put an end to this one man. But such was the resolution and resolve and the, and, and, and the spirit of this one man that he continued and he continued overcoming everything that came his way till Allah showed him the day that he entered the very city from which he was driven from and he elevated the kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah as a result of which today the efforts of one man today of one man and today you have billions and millions of Muslims around the globe efforts of one man my friends I assure you it only takes one man to make the difference only one man you don't need hundreds and thousands 
You need to protect your Iman. You need to make provisions for the Iman of your children and your grandchildren. And the only way we will be able to do this if we rise to the challenges that come our way. You have the money, you have the resources, you have the professionalism. All we need now is young blood. Young blood with fire burning in their hearts that we will elevate the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and we will rise up to every challenge that comes our way right till the till death do us part.